How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, well, uh, just to start off the interview, uh, I wanted to uh, first um, go back in time a little bit. Um, I understand. <laughs> oh, if only we could go back in time. There's so many things I would do differently. <laughs> they start really in college. <laughs> Well, well, with that, uh, well, with that said, um, I understand that that film wasn't the uh, what wasn't the initial path that you had. You started off in uh, law initially, correct? And uh, down the line, uh, you uh, um, uh, uh, went uh, um, got involved uh, with film. Yeah, I've had a somewhat erratic uh, but wonderful career path. Uh, it's one of those things I could have never planned out in retrospect. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could never have planned out prospectively, but in retrospect, it was exactly uh, what I should have done. So, yeah, I started out as, um, uh, I was, you know, actress in the arts and, uh, uh, during college, um, but then went to law school and started out as a, a, a copyright attorney or an intellectual property attorney, which I did for a big law firm in New York, and then I came to the... Uh, U.S. Copyright Office here in D.C. and did that for several years, um, doing copyright law internationally and, uh, and working with Congress. Um, and uh, so I did that for about eight years, and then uh, I uh, left the law and went back to film school at NYU and did some uh, some courses there in documentary film and uh, started over again as a documentary filmmaker in New York. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, well, well, now to begin going, going, moving on to your your, your documentary, Best of the Promise. Um, I understand that that uh, the the true story, um, which is obviously highlighted in the film, was based on the book uh, uh, Besa, uh, Muslims Who Saved the Jews in uh, World War II. Um, were you already familiar with that story beforehand, or or did the discovery of the book inform you of the story? way this film developed is an example of why, uh, you know, uh, documentary filmmaking is so much more fun than narrative filmmaking, because you never really know, uh, you, you don't know your story until you finish fin- filming it. Uh, we started out working with Norman, who uh, took the photographs for and, and wrote the Best of the Promise book, and as we originally conceived the film, it was going to be following him as he went back and forth to Albania and interviewed uh, the survivors uh, of World War II, both the Muslims and the Jews, uh, uh, who had these incredibly uh, vibrant stories that had never been told. Uh, but it was an entirely retrospective documentary, you know, was looking back and telling all these different stories of uh, these different older people, uh, and then with kind of the through line of Norman, you know, Norman finding them and photographing them. Uh, and we did that. That was how we pitched the film and started to fund the film and began to shoot the film. Um, and it was, I think, you know, I don't know how I think about it. So we did a whole shoot in Albania where we were just interviewing. Uh, we were there with Norman, and we were interviewing kind of elderly survivors of World War II, Muslims who were still alive in Albania. And there was this man who kept wanting to be interviewed by us. Okay. And we kept putting him off because he was he, he was the next generation. He wasn't uh, he hadn't you know saved Jews or participated. He'd been born after the war, and he wanted to tell us about his father who had saved Jews during World War II. Okay. And we were really focused because these people were quite elderly, and you know sometimes would die between literally between when we planned our trip and when we got there. And so we kept putting him off um, and focusing on the the, the first generation survivors. And on our second trip, uh, he still was around and talking to our fixer and the people that we were working with about wanting to come in to be interviewed. And um, fortuitously, uh, I think somebody canceled or some one of the people we were supposed to uh, interview fell ill. Mm. And we said, okay, you know, what, that Recep Hoja guy that keeps wanting to come in, like, <laughs> let's just get him off our back. We can, you know, he can come in and take his take this interview slot. And then this man walked in with this amazing face. You know, he has the kindest, most soulful face I've ever seen and proceeded to tell us the story about these books that this Jewish family had left with his father and that he had sort of assumed this responsibility of finding this family. And he, he brought the books with him, with him and he sort of he showed them to us and he had written the Red Cross and he had written Yad Vashem, but, you know, his research possibilities were limited. And he said, please, please, can you help me find the family to whom these books belong because if 
I don't do it, uh, when I die, this obligation will pass to my son, and I don't want to leave this for him to do. And it was so compelling, and this mystery of the books was so compelling, and, you know, we only had these few clues, kind of the name of the family that had been written in the back of the book and some dates Mm -hmm. that they had written in the book. And, you know, kind of in that moment, our film totally changed from a largely historical you know, document uh, documentary to much more of a verite documentary where we, where we had the story and we had no idea whether uh, there was a story there or how it would end, um, but we, we actually put a halt to production for gotcha. a year and we hired researchers in uh, Israel, in New York, and in Bulgaria uh, to try and track down this family and to find where this family was and to help Recep look for this family. We went to Albania, I mean, we went to Bulgaria and looked at the records there, the birth records and the death, death records and the cemeteries, and we wow. a big influx of, um, of Jews left Albania and went to New York, so we had researchers in the, in the Albanian Jewish community in New York looking for these people, and, you know, and we eventually found them, and they were living in Tel Aviv, uh, we knew we had to bring Reg up there and figure out how the story was going to end. But it was just so interesting because I was telling everybody the film that I was making, and that was a much more kind of historical, uh, you know, interviewing survivors. And we all know how the story ends, but, you know, uh, this is telling their stories. And it went from that to very much uh, totally dynamic, no idea how it was going to end, no idea what was going to happen, you know, kind of modern day quest. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that actually gives me a good transition. Um, I, I did a little uh, research, and I read that, um, am I pronouncing it right, Bessa? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Bessa is apparently a code of honor, or it's a practice uh, that basically um, stipulates that it's better to die than to uh, turn your back on a, a person in need. Um, so to, to jump off of that... Um, it, this film, you know, uh, breaks down uh, barriers, particularly with uh, religious uh, denominations, which is, you know, fitting seeing that the subject of religion is w- basically one of those hallmark issues that seems to divide people. Uh, so, so keeping that in mind, w- w- was that the purpose of the object uh, objective in making this film to to break down those barriers or that those assumptions that that people have when it comes to uh to religion or or one's beliefs yeah i mean it's not a polemic film we didn't make this film to make a point we made it to tell a very compelling story okay um but but the reason that we are also passionate about it is because it really uh i think you know it sets an example for uh, an attitude towards humanity and an attitude towards what religion really requires of us that is compassion different that is that is compassion and that is different than a lot of preconceptions that we have especially of muslims i think in this country and especially when you talk about the relationship between muslims and jews i mean the idea that you know thousands of muslims saved thousands of jews just uh, you have this moment of what really that's no Right. Uh, and so to be able to tell a story that just in a very simple human, uh, you know, f- for me, just seeing these faces and hearing these stories, heartfelt ways kind of contradicts, uh, contradicts some of our preconceptions about how these religions relate to each other was a really, was an opportunity that, that I couldn't, that I couldn't pass up. Um, uh, you know, it, it's just, uh. It was it was it was a very powerful opportunity to to tell that story. I see, I see. Uh, well, well, moving on to another topic. Um, uh, no, uh, and, and let me. I just want to talk for a second. So, base is actually a little bit more complicated, I think, than than your first understanding of it. It's not just it's a it's a sin to turn your back on somebody in need. You know, although I think that's probably part of it. It's really about this code of hospitality. Okay. If somebody knocks on your door and you take them in. Gotcha. then you have this uh, ironclad duty to protect them at all costs. Originally, the film was called God's House, and it came from an Albanian saying that said, uh, my house is first God's house, then my guest's house, and then my family's house. Hmm. So that was sort of the order that they prioritized things in. 
so it's, you know, if you take somebody in, whether they're Jewish or Muslim or Christian or whoever they are, it's about uh, their humanity and you being their protectors. And that sort of transcends all of the other, uh, all of the other elements. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, well, 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 um, in terms of another topic, uh, uh, in the in the I guess the the reality uh, reality uh, world uh, on television, you also um, worked uh, for for quite a, a, a long time on uh, on Dog the uh, Bounty Hunter, which uh... <laughs> that will forever haunt me. I have to <laughs> I've worked for PBS. I've made my own independent you know feature documentaries about civil rights and religion and forever i will be known as the story editor on the first season of dog the bounty hunter well um, i mean anyway, it, 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 it's a, i mean it's a, it was a you know it was a entertaining show so i mean um, it was an awesome show it was great to be it was great to be part of it well, well with that being said um it, it did uh end earlier um this this year um um ending you know the uh, season 8 um is there, are there any any plans whatsoever to to revisit that, or or that you're aware of that they're you know planning on bringing it back at, at any point? Oh gosh, you know. So honestly, I did that for a year uh, when I was pregnant because it was an editing job, and I loved it. It was super fun. But I was just uh, involved in the first season, and there's now been like twenty gajillion seasons. So I don't, you know, I get Christmas cards from that production company, but I don't otherwise have any kind of knowledge of what their plans are or anything. I was oh, I enjoyed okay. watching the show in its later seasons. Oh, okay. So it was just one season. I thought I didn't know if it was more more than more no, than. No, just one. the first. I was just involved in the first season, which was the awesomest season. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, well, well. To add to that, um, are, are you in the process of, of working on um on any other uh, uh uh television series or or if you know not television uh, TV series uh any uh, upcoming uh, documentaries that that are still kind of in the developmental stage. Well, so actually, I've left the field of documentary film. I don't, I guess this wasn't in my bio, but um, uh, actually, after we got, I worked on uh, BESA for two and a half years, two and a half amazing years, and finished shooting and started the rough cut phase, uh, started rough cut, but at that point, I was asked to... Um, Be the executive director. Yeah, to, to run um, an advisory committee to the White House on the arts. So that's a full-time job and something that I've been doing since... July of 2009. Um, gotcha. So, uh, you know, that's a, sadly an 80 hour a week job, but super fun and uh, a total honor. Uh, and I've, you know, so I've been able to stay um, uh, in touch with, with BESA and have, was able to, you know, kind of see a few cuts, but I really stepped away from production uh, at the rough cut stage and the work, the hard work was carried on by the editor uh, and the, and the executive producer. Um, and my current job doesn't sadly allow me to uh, have any film projects on the side. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Rachel, for your time. Thanks for speaking with Real Film News.